Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, wow, 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 wow. See, I told you, man, isn't it just crazy? Oh, Jesus, we love you so much. Okay, guys, if you don't know, my name is Jake Mason, and I love young people. Um, I am on Circuit Riders uh, out here in Huntington Beach, California. And uh, tonight, we have a very special kind of um, live stream broadcast. And the focus is Infusion Youth Camp. I'm wearing my Aloha shirt, shout out to Hawaii. Um, if you have been to the Hawaii Infusion, I just go go ahead and like do a little palm tree emoji or just do something, a wave, I don't know. If you've been to, you know, Infusion in Florida or, or other places, go ahead and just show some love in the comments, all right? I, I wanna see, I wanna see what you guys are, are coming from. Um, it's been so amazing. And so two weeks ago, all right, you guys saw my wife um, and I up here and we un unfortunately, had to say that we were canceling our in-person camps due to COVID. And we're pivoting uh, to an online expression. So right now, uh, we're gonna show the, um, kind of like the video that explains a little bit of what this online three-day revival training is gonna look like. Check it out. You might have thought your 2020 was gonna look like this. when it actually looks like this. Are you crying because Infusion's canceled? Yes! But it's not! Infusion as we know it is canceled, but you can still take your summer back. Infusion is going online. This summer we're doing a three-day online revival training camp, and it's all about getting trained. But how's this gonna work? We couldn't let COVID-19 steal our summer, so it's going to be up to you to gather your friends for this online experience. But you've got to honor your state guidelines. Then rally as many friends as you can. It's going to be awesome. This could be gathering in your living room, garage, backyard, parks. Get creative! And we'll be hosting live stream gatherings with worship, revival training, and at-home families. Your squad will be assigned a circuit rider camp coach to take you through this online experience. Get ready to end this three-day experience with practical tools and a revival-ready plan to reach your generation! Plus, we're working on a sick merch pack that you don't want to miss out on. All this for only $45. Check out our social media or infusionyouthcamp.com to apply. We believe that in these crazy times, people are going to be looking for hope. We want you to come and get trained so you have the answer that people are looking for. There it is, there it is. Okay, now, <clears throat> if you didn't see there was this amazing skateboarder at the very beginning. And I just wanna say, I might know that guy. In fact, that guy might be my very best friend um, if you consider yourself your best friend. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I just, you know, I've, I've been waiting for the, for the moment. I've been waiting for, for my moment to let the world know that I am a skateboarder and I love to skate, okay? If there are any skaters out there, I challenge you to a game of skate, come at me, let's go. Um, no, 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 uh, I do wanna play skate. But here's the deal, it, it's gonna look different. It's gonna look different, but I wanna give you just a, a little background and, and a little bit of my heart on, on why I still think that you should try and engage with some sort of camp, some sort of online experience that we're gonna be providing for you. Now, the question is, why camp? Why? Why camp? Um, I get a lot, of, a lot of different people saying a lot of different things, okay? I've been in, in the camp business for 
15, um, uh, infusion of the 13 years. And then before that, we'd, be, we'd, we'd run camps all over the world, uh, soccer camps in Kenya. Um, we would do like dance camps over in France. Um, wherever I went, it was just one of those ways to bring people together and to teach them about Jesus. And my dad, in fact, uh, would do camps almost every other weekend uh, for the lower income people when I was growing up. So I would be on stage holding a prop here or having a line here or, or just jumping in wherever I could. So it's something that I so firmly believe in. But I do get a lot of people that say, but is camp really all that? All right. Is it really the tool that God wants to use? Now, maybe you are a bit surprised by that, or maybe you're like, yeah, man, like students go away. They, they just get pumped up and they get all this hype going on and, and then they come back and, and everything goes back to normal. Well, I'd like to maybe reframe why I believe God uses camps and why I think they're so important, okay? Now, let's talk about how much time a week you spend at church, all right? So go ahead and just put in the comments, how many hours a week are you at church? I'm, I'm curious, all right? I'm curious. Some of you um, are putting in like <laughs> probably a lot of hours. Um, right now, COVID's got many of you just at a big fat zero. Um, but normally, I would say most of us, if we're going to a Wednesday, if we're going to a, a Sunday, that's like one to three hours, all right? Unless you are in a long church service, I bless you, right? Um, but for people who are serving, right, people who are um, maybe on the worship team, you, you're clocking in maybe five to six, all right, five to six hours. And that's solid. You know, there's nothing against that, nothing against that. And so we overall, like 50 weeks out of the year, there's 52 weeks in a year, but 50 weeks you're at church, right? You're going around 100 to 300 hours, all right? I know you're like, Jake, we just graduated. Why are you doing math? Just, just oh, stick with me, stick with me. So 100 to 300 on the high side. Now, how many waking hours do you have in a year span? Now, depending on how much you sleep, how much you don't sleep, I love to get like seven to eight hours. That rarely happens because I got kids. But usually, that's like a healthy amount of sleep to get. And if you're not getting that much sleep, um, I encourage you to do that. <laughs> So that clocks in right around 6,000 hours a year that you are awake and that you are able to do something. So if you look at it in that perspective, you're going 100 hours to 300 hours compared to 6,000. Um, and that's right around less than 2% to maybe 5%. So with that kind of perspective, all right, I want us to think about another thing. I'm going to jump around. I'm going to come back to it, all right? So maybe you're spending two to 5%, and it's broken up, you know? It's kind of broken up over a long percentage of time. Now, there was this man in the Bible named Nehemiah, all right? Nehemiah is a book of the Bible, and it's one of my favorite books of the Bible. And what happened was, um, the, the, the temple was rebuilt in Jerusalem. So a long time, a long, a long time before this, um, a, a huge kingdom came in and destroyed Jerusalem, just burned it to the ground, and they took all the Jews to a foreign land, okay? They left a few just to kind of do crops and, and make sure there were some people tending the city, but it was scorched, it was burned, and it was destroyed. Now, after decades and decades, um, people were like, are we going to be able to go back home? And so Ezra, the book before Nehemiah, goes back and he rebuilds the temple. But the walls around Jerusalem are not built. And so Nehemiah just gets stirred uh, in his heart and he asks the king, can I go and can I rebuild the walls? And the king gives him it, the miracle in itself. And so what happens is Nehemiah rebuilds the walls in 52 days. 52 days. That's like two Februaries, okay? Stick with me. 52 days may seem like a, okay, that's like two months, man. That's solid. Good job, Nehemiah. No, no, no. Dude, this wall, the walls of Jerusalem are like two miles Two miles, right? 36 feet high, eight feet thick, okay? That's a lot of stone. That's a lot of work. There's no excavators. There's no dump trucks. There's no cranes. This, maybe there's a pulley system. I don't know. But, but like, that is crazy how quickly that happened. And maybe you're not impressed by two months, right? But, but just think of this. He did it quickly. And the way that he accomplished it was he decided to be consistent. 
he decided to focus and he decided to stay engaged and grit it out until it was done, okay? Um, and I, I, I want to ask you a question, right? And, and we're coming back, we're coming back, right? What are you building with the Lord right now, okay? What are you building with the Lord right now? When you look at a camp, right? So infusion is normally 10 days. There's like 17, 18 hours a day. So we're talking 10 days. That's 170, 180 hours. So compared to how much time you're spending at church, this is like a year and a half's worth of church, right? And I know it's more than that, but focus time. When you go to church, you're focused on Jesus, right? With other believers, encouraging you, giving you, giving it your all. So in 10 days, you're, you're clocking in almost a year and a half Woo. worth of time, right? Now, for some of you who are, who are just in church all the time, this is like six months of church, six months nonstop, pop, 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 pop. And I think similar to Nehemiah, when we're able to give that amount of time, when we're able to focus that clearly, the Lord does something. He builds something. And he doesn't just build a little bit. He builds a lot because we're able to go until it's finished. When you start building the wall, the reason they had to keep finishing and going and building the walls, because if you just put a little bit down, somebody can come down and just destroy you what you did. But if you build it fast and quick and it's solid, then nothing is going to remove it. So again, I'm asking the question, what are you building right now in your relationship with Jesus? Psalm 127 verse 1 says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Now, <clears throat> some of you are thinking, look, Jake, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. Just honest moment. COVID has been so difficult for me. Like, I have not seen my friends. I have missed my graduation. Um, like, my church is, is filled with a lot of older people. And because, because of that, we're, we're not meeting because we don't want them to get the disease. We don't want them to get the flu, right? It's not a disease. It's the flu. And, 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 I, and I respect that. But it's, but it's left me, you know? Some of you are saying, it's left me with such a hard, like, season. And, I, and, and I've not built anything with God because I've not known what to do. And, and if that's where you're at, then thank you for being honest. Thank you for, for realizing that this is a strange time that we're living in. Now, on the other side, some of you have said, man, this season has been incredible for me. Like I've been able to go deep in the word like never before. I've been able to, to set aside time to listen to, to podcasts. I've, I've been talking to my friends you know, about Jesus. And, and it's just been crazy. I've learned so much about God. And, and you know, they're kind of two polar opposite sentiments. And, and one isn't better than the other because honesty is, is where we meet in the middle. Because when we're honest with God, then he's able to take what we have and do something incredible with it, all right? So whether you've been able to engage with the Lord and build something in this quarantine, or maybe you've, you've felt so distant and you've not been able to, be honest with where you're at. Because if you're honest now, God's going to use it, okay? And the Bible says that unless the Lord is the one initiating this, then we're laboring completely in vain. And I, I feel like the Lord is, is wanting to give you an invitation that he wants to build something inside of you this summer. Why do we love camp, right? Why do we love it? Because when you come out of camp, it's not about replicating what happens at camp. It's about having a strong foundation moving forward. A strong foundation in the coming season that the Lord is going to build upon. And sometimes you have to focus. Sometimes you have to remove all distraction so that you can Get that foundation secure, okay? <clears throat> Again, some of you are like, Jake, that's good. Thumbs up, dude. Great job. You know, you're, you're crushing it. And I, I'm sure that will happen for me. I'm sure that's going to come, right? You know, like, it's, it's going to happen. Listen, James 4 warns us 
of, of that kind of blase, oh, you know, it'll be all right, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. James 4.13 says, listen, those of you who are boasting today or tomorrow will go to another city. Spend some time and go into business and make heaps of profit. You know, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, Jake, God will build it, it's good, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then verse 14 says, but you don't have a clue what tomorrow may bring. For your fleeting life is but a warm breath of air that is visible in the cold only for a moment and then vanishes. Instead, of you, instead, you should say, our tomorrows are in the Lord's hand. And if he is willing, we will live life to its fullest and do this and do that. <clears throat> I know many of you understand that we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised um, even our, our next moment. And that's important to carry with us because it, it allows us to make sure that we are in step with what God wants. And, and if you feel like maybe you've gotten out of step with God, it's as easy as this, Lord, I repent. You're back in step. I know you don't think it is, but he is faithful. When you're honest with yourself, man, I don't want to be out of step. I don't want to be blasé. I don't want to go here or there or just do whatever. I want to know. Lord, if you're willing, tomorrow is yours and I want to give it to you. Even before I go to sleep tonight, it's yours, God. Lead me. And that's when you get to live life to the fullest. <clears throat> I believe the Lord wants to build something in you. And in order to let him, we have to make space. You have to make space. Uh, you have to limit distraction. You have to listen to his direction. You have to let go of unnecessary and unhealthy habits in your life. And the truth is, is when you focus on something, it, it will become clearer. It will. And if that's true, then when you focus on Jesus, you're going to see him more clearly. Um, Tonight, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the only one that's going to share. And so I just want to, I want to finish here. Um, a few more minutes, just stay with me. I, I want to share some stories of people who, who came to camp, all right? And, um, and, and what happened in their life when they came to camp. First one is, is about a young man. This was, this was last, uh, this was last summer, okay? And this was the very first night. Everybody's tired getting in on the plane. And, and sometimes you just want to go to sleep. But we always try and gather everybody just to set some expectation. And, um, and I'm, I'm in there and I'm, I'm welcoming everybody. We're getting stoked. And I said, some of you are out here and, and you're here because it's why. It, you're here because, because you know, you're, someone paid for your ticket. Oh, man. Um, and, and that's exactly where this, this young man was. He, he didn't necessarily want to come out here, but someone had paid for him to be there. And I said, but some of you are here. Some of you are here because you want to be the student that goes to the rager, that goes to the party, stands up on the table and says, is there anyone in here who's tired of this? Is there anyone in here who, who, who's smiling on the outside, but is broken? On the inside, will I have a message for you? Jesus loves you. And I started to just feel the Holy Spirit begin to, to prophesy that some of these young people were going to stand on tables and preach the gospel in a place that nobody would expect it to people who were broken and hiding that. And what happened was, is the Lord spoke to this young man and said, you know, that's you. You know that you're the one going to the party with a drink in your hand, a smile on your face, but you're tormented on the inside. I want to show you my love. I want to break in. I want to save you. And that night, he was honest with God. And he was honest with his friends and his staff, and he gave his life to Jesus. When you're thrown into the presence of Jesus, you come out restored. That's what happens. Another story is a, a little girl. Um, she was actually 12 and we made an exception. Um, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to say it. Honestly, girls mature a little faster than guys. All right. And uh, and I respect that. So we we let this this little 12 year old um, and she was from China. So not only was she young, um, she also didn't speak English super well. But she, but her dad was there and he wanted her to, to jump into camp. So we made space for her. 
And, um, and I felt so bad, you know, we couldn't have a translator, but she was there doing her best. And one night when all the girls were together, we, uh, um, you know, we, we have these moments where we have the guys go and, and do something manly and then the girls go and, and, and do something, you know, womanly, I suppose. And they were praying and, and worshiping and all of a sudden this little girl begins to weep in a time of worship. And, and, her, and her roommates and her staff, they, they gather around her and she's crying and she's crying and they're like, oh my gosh, something's happening. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. And, uh, and uh, her glasses are, are in her hands and her staff looks at her and says, what's going on? And she looks up and she says, I can see. And she handed the staff her glasses. <laughs> That's crazy. The Lord healed her eyes. When you give space to Jesus, like blind eyes are open. Another story is during that, that man time, we had two other little, little dudes. They were, they were younger ones, 13, 14 years old. And they were in the same room. And, and during the workout time, oh man, we were going ham. This little guy busts his ankle, all right? And he can't even walk. So I'm a little sad because I'm like, man, it's always a bummer when you get injured at camp. You can't run. You can't play basketball. You can't do all that fun stuff. So I'm carrying him on my back and his little and his little roomie was with him. And we went all the way back down to the room and he looked at me and said, well, Jake, uh, aren't we supposed to pray for people when they get injured? And I was like, yes, dude, we, su- we are always supposed to do that. And I said, um, you know what? You do this. I got to go make sure that everyone's right. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, just remove yourself. This, I, I'm, I'm at work here. And so I, I get outside the door and I just kind of turn around. I peek my head in. And, uh, and this little dude's praying for him. And, and he just does it. So suddenly, God, heal my friend. Take the pain away in Jesus' name. And what happens? Boom. Ankle is healed. And this is the response that I'm peeking around the door looking at. This dude is jumping up and down on his ankle. Wow. And, and then I look at the other guy who prayed for him and he just starts weeping. He starts weeping. He said, God used me to heal someone. I can't believe it. I never thought God would use me to heal someone. I get, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Ah. Oh, so amazing when you trust in Jesus, right? Broken bodies are healed and destinies are realized. Another story, right? I'm coming to a close. Another story is this. <clears throat> we have these treasure hunts. We have these treasure hunts. And, um, and my buddy is like, man, he was at the end of his rope. He told me after this. He was like, you're telling me God can speak. And I'll give him one more chance. Like, I, I've been to church my whole life. I've never heard God speak. I, I just want to hear his voice. And so he hears in his mind, white hair, orange shirt. And, you know, He's like, all right, here we go. Let's do this. He goes around everywhere in campus. Nothing. So he's discouraged. He's discouraged. And one of his friends is like, well, we didn't go down to the bottom of campus. And in his mind, he's like, the bottom of campus? I don't want to go down to the bottom of campus. So many stairs. If you've been to Kona, you understand. So many stairs down. So many stairs up. But he's like, no, let's go. Let's go. Come on. So they go down to the bottom of campus. And as he's walking down there, he's super discouraged, right? And so he's heard white hair, orange shirt, and also, oh, I forgot. Also, he said, the person that you meet, there's something wrong in, in, in the family. And you need to pray for someone in the family. And so they're walking, and literally no one is around. And they go down to the very bottom, and, at, and they're about to turn around. And they see the gate, and someone inside of the gate says, hello there. And it's an old lady, white hair, bright orange shirt. My boy freaks. My boy freaks out. He doesn't know what to do. And all of his buddies are like, there she is. There she is. Getting so excited. And he, and they're like, dude, you got to go ask her. You got to go ask her. He goes over and says, hey, I feel, the Lord told me you were down here. Is there something going on in your family that we need to pray for? She's like, yes, actually, one of my family members has cancer. And I, I don't know if they're going to make it. Let's pray. And so he was able to minister to that woman, pray for that family member, and heard the voice of God clearer than ever. When you listen to Jesus' direction, He takes you on an adventure like no other. I love camp, and I know that we can't be in person, but it's about setting aside a time that matters. And this three-day online training, this revival training, we want to invite you guys into. We want to believe that, that God is going to reach through the screen, right? 
and touch you. And not only that, if you gather your friends together, you're going to have a good time. You're going to have an amazing time. Whether you're playing video games, whether you're eating pizza, if you have your buddies around, if you have your squad, you are going to have a good time. That's just the truth, guys. But when you throw Jesus in the middle, it goes from having a good time to having a life-changing encounter. So I'm encouraging you guys, sign up, right? It's $45. We're not making any money on this. We, got it. we want to send you some dope merch, t-shirt. We got fanny packs. We're thinking of doing just like a, a Jesus lapel pin, stickers, all that kind of stuff. Just so that you're prepped, that you're ready to go into your school year blazing on fire for Jesus. And I know we can't go to camp, but I believe this summer, 2020, Jesus wants to bring camp to you. He wants to say, I see you as a leader. I see you. You're going to lead your own camp this summer. Ah! It's going to be amazing, guys. It's going to be amazing. I'll leave you with this, okay? Um, uh, I, got a, I got a message from a student this week um, on the infusion deal, and, and, this is, and this is what it says. Jesus has literally changed me in so many ways. From overcoming a long uh, life fear, a lifelong fear, to making friends that I've had for life, that I'll have for life who love God. Mm. He has changed me for the better, and I finally realized the experiences I've had at camp can happen anywhere. I just need to trust the Lord on that. And I'm, and I'm, I feel like this is for every single person who's watching, who's wondering, man, what am I going to do this summer? Can you trust the Lord on that? Can you trust the Lord on that? That if you gather your friends, that if you put Jesus in the middle, boom, it's going to be something that you will never, ever forget. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to see our youth. We will see you next week. Love you so much.